These stories are inspired by the actual case files of the Office of Scientific Investigation and Research. What is your position? You copy? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, I copy. We are five clicks inside the park. Any luck? No, no sign of them yet. Keep uh, we'll advise. Over. Corporal. New orders, Lieutenant? No, same as when we started. Locate the lost civilians, bring them on home. First time I ever got called up to locate some lost fly fishers. Don't talk about fishing, Gardner. This is screwing up my whole weekend. All right, all right, cut the chit-chat. Let's move out. Arrow, sweep formation. Sergeant, take the point. Yes, sir. You know what's weird? No, what is weird, Corporal? No birds. This time of day, they should be going full throttle. Don't look like fishing tackle to me. Lieutenant, over here. We cover this perimeter. Hey, gentlemen, spread out. Report, Sergeant. What the hell happened here? I don't know, sir. Looks like they were attacked by some kind of animal. They're all dead. Get in! We secure this perimeter, Sergeant. I mean, lock it down tight! Hold on now, mister. We're gonna get you out of here. Go. Before it comes back. <sighs> Lieutenant, whatever did this is gonna be... One of the joys of living on this planet is to watch shooting stars streak across our heavens. Meteorites from the depths of space burning up in our atmosphere. Some have collided with Earth and caused massive destruction. There are those who believe a giant meteor contributed to the Ice Age and the extinction of the dinosaurs. As the OSIR investigated the horrifying deaths of a NASA scientific team, they had to determine if the meteorite in this case had brought with it an unwanted hitchhiker. Yes, sir. It's the same story here. We got five victims, all dead. Status? We've begun evacuation of the entire park. Move it, Lieutenant. You copy. Sir, I am aware of the threat. I lost one of my men up on that ridge last night. Well, help is on the way. 
And what's the ETA on this team of specialists? You know your orders? Oh, I understand, sir. They are to have full authority. Oh, yes, I will liaise with them as soon as they get here. Whiskey, whiskey out. Lima Tango, out. Come on, Lieutenant. Those NASA guys up there will not fly fishing any more than these folks were. What the hell is going on here? Recon up that road and look for civilian vehicles. They should be here any minute. Make sure they get through the roadblocks. Lieutenant, Sergeant Phillips. He's dead, I know. We all follow orders, Corporal. It's called chain of command. Now, this conversation is over. Dismissed. Yes, sir. File number 33130, case manager Connor Doyle, initial log entry. We've been asked by federal authorities to investigate the mysterious deaths of a team of NASA scientists and a member of the Arkansas National Guard in the Ozark Mountains. This mission follows hard on the heels of our tracking the orbital entry and impact of a meteorite in the same general area. Professor Doyle, Lieutenant Jack Vaughn with the National Guard out of Little Rock. Welcome to Arkansas. Can you bring us up to speed as to when this latest attack occurred? It's about uh, 12 hours ago. This brings our body count up to 13. That's the Nassau team, my squad, and now these people. What exactly attacked you, Lieutenant? Well, I don't know exactly. I guess that's why you're here. I'll tell you one thing, though. Something hit these folks so hard, they didn't even have time to say a short prayer. The NASA team that was in the area first, what was their mission? An inspection of the meteorite, data collection, trajectory match. Seems like light duty for NASA. Let's just say that this particular meteorite has government intelligence watching us closely. According to military sources, Lieutenant Vaughn was under strict orders not to tell his men what they were looking for. So this was a high security military operation. Connor, I'd like to review the preliminary autopsies just to see what we can learn. I'll start interviewing the witnesses. Uh, Russell will handle that, Lindsay. I want you to assist Anton. This operation is extremely sensitive. I need my most experienced operative spearheading the investigation. And do we have a case objective? Or is that uh, high-level security as well? Identify the phenomenon, rectify the situation. That's all for now. What we found, it was out there. Something tore those people to pieces. It killed Phillips in like three seconds. It took him down like a rag doll. You know, I, I saw action in the Gulf and in Bosnia. This was brutal. I never even really saw what took Phillips out, but I saw him die. He was a friend of mine. The forensic team will conduct a full autopsy upon their arrival. This is my specialty, Anton. I don't know the first thing about forensics. Then it's about time you learned. The dead sometimes speak more eloquently than the living. Come on over here. Let me hand. What do you see? Oh. Cause of death. Massive blood loss, I would guess. Precisely. Odd. It's punctures inside the wound that are smooth. Something's blocking the trachea. Pull his head back. Go on. Oh. What on earth is it? Well, it's something organic. But as to what it is, Dr. Cooper will have to analyze it. Dear God. What? Alex. Alex Knopf. I met him at a symposium on genetic botany in London last year. His specialty is xenobiology. 
unknown life forms. Ms. Doyle, go ahead. Seems that NASA was out there looking for something a little livelier than a meteor. They had a team of geneticists with them. I see. Anything else? Air Force Space Command and NORAD both confirmed tracking the meteor's entry. But I think they're being a little too quiet about NASA's involvement. Anything from the autopsies? We pulled something from inside one of the neck wounds. It's definitely organic. We're going to go back to the lab to run an analysis. Copy that. Maintain contact. We're closing in on the impact site. Doyle out. I'm reading a lot of air moisture. No tox traces or hazmat yet. Stay sharp. Keep an eye on the motion sensors. Arrived at point of impact. Expedite the scans, Peter. This place isn't secure. Copy that. It feels like a different planet. What the hell are those things? Cooper, can you identify them? It appears to be an embryonic shell of some kind. Shape and consistency unlike anything I've seen before. Connor, you better take a look at this. These must be the eggs themselves. You picking all this up? Loud and clear, Peter. I got a bad feeling about this. We'll need a sample. We have movement. 500 meters southeast and closing. Moving closer. Rapid life form movement closing in from the southeast. Any visuals? Negative. We'll switch to thermal vision and try and get a lock on it. Watch the sound. Thermal tracking online. Professor, move your people back. Peter, what's going on? Yeah, we're reading life forms. They're closing fast. We're trying to get a lock on thermal. This is Doyle. Prepare to move back on my command. Just give him a few more seconds, Connor. Hold your positions. <laughs> Whoa! What was that? What's happening? I got movement in the north now. Peter, something just went through the scan. Fall back. Repeat. Fall back. Scan and report. What do you see? How was that? Oh, God. Peter, what happened? Scanlon and Russell. Peter, there was nothing you could do. It wasn't your mistake. It was mine. We have a job to do. Scanlon and Russell knew that. Now let's get back to work. Lindsay, I want you to analyze the on-site footage and prepare a report. We need to know what happened out there. Okay, back it up, back it up. And now, freeze that. That's it, whatever it is. That appears to be some kind of Barb left behind after the physical attack. Perhaps a, a feeder tube? And it's related to this embryo. It seems likely. It's composed of the same organic matter common to heterotroph parasites. An insect egg. Oh, well, I, I don't know that I'm ready to make that conclusion yet. What the hell hit us out there? I really don't know. You got anything from the psych assessments? 
Some post-traumatic stress, uh, typical across-the-board disorder, is nothing unusual. Maybe you can pry some more details from the witnesses. Start with Peter. Put him under. Peter, I want you to relax. I want you to go back to yesterday, to where the meteor came down. Sorry. Now I want you to freeze the image of that creature in your mind. You're safe. And I want you to describe to me exactly what you see in the most specific detail. Insect. When the Connor, sprouts. you better come look at this. Obvious exoskeleton. I've been detecting rhythmic vibrations coming from within the embryo. The surface tension and interior temperature rising as well. What's happening to it? I don't know. Life form readings are increasing. Is it hatching? I really don't know. It's hard to say with an unknown life form. does appear to be an insect of some kind. An insect that big? <gasps> Cooper! What are you doing? CO2. That should tranquilize it for a few minutes. Siphonoptera minoris. Incredible. My Latin's a bit rusty. Well, believe it or not, it's a close genetic cousin to a flea. That's a flea? Well, a, a mutation of one at any rate. How big could it get once it matures? Well, insects of this class usually grow to 20, sometimes 30 times their birth weight. I think we found our life form. I'm inclined to agree. Look, this is Peter's description sketched out. How many eggs did we find out there? Well, several dozen. Most of them already hatched. What might be the possible rate of reproduction? Well, normally, 10 adult females could produce 100,000 eggs in under 30 days. Let's put a team together to assemble some first-hand data. Full security hardware. Case log update. Having determined that the life form we're looking for may be a mutated or possibly extraterrestrial insect, we're returning to the impact site. Come, Lake Jack Donard, you copy? Copy. I have you on my screens. Crack Jack free on guns you got. Ain't gonna do you any good when they come at you. We'll take our chances. I'll do what them science geeks said for. They got wasted, too. All right, platoon halt! Doyle, this is as far as the platoon goes. Lieutenant, your orders are... I know my orders, sir, but I will not repeat not send these boys into a situation they can't handle. Well, me, Gardner, I'll go the rest of the way with you. Damn right. Send your men back, then let's press on. All right, platoon, fall back. Let's move out, safety's off. We'll just come here in daylight, and the whole battalion. Well, night is when this type of insect lies dormant. Theoretically. Doc, there's nothing dormant about this bug. Cover this side. Don, are you getting this? Affirmative. You guys had better see this. Cooper, be careful. It's dead. Look at the size of the epipharynx. In Incredibly efficient. Don, are you getting this too? Affirmative. 
It's a nasty piece of work. What killed it? Possibly its mate. Which would mean that more reproduction is underway. Leave it. Everyone fall back. Cooper, do you want to end up like Scanlon and Russell? Move! Go, go, go! Sure, no problem. I'm just gonna take this little guy in the name of science. Final case log entry. After discovering the magnitude of the infestation, the authorities have ordered the termination of the life form encountered. The region has been evacuated. Widespread airstrikes have been implemented. Where did these deadly creatures come from? Were they cosmic stowaways? Were they a mutated form of insect affected by radiation from the fallen space rock? Or were they a grotesque and deadly prehistoric species unearthed by the meteorite's collision? Well, if the latter is true, then who knows what else may rest beneath the surface of our soil waiting to grow under the light of our nurturing sun. Listen, what did you get for the last question in Chapter 7? If I tell you this time, are you going to remember it? You asked me the same question four hours ago. God, I hate quantum mechanics. No, no I hate all physics. Well, after tomorrow, you won't have to think about it. Until next year. i got to get some caffeine. Dimensional portholes enabling matter to move instantly from one place to another great distances apart have been frequently exploited by science fiction writers. Unproven by existing technological means, the concept remains possible if one considers superstring theory. But for a stressed out single mother, Angela Corbet, and her seven-year-old daughter Sabine, encountering a dimensional rift became much more than a mere theoretical possibility. It became a disturbing reality which would ultimately change their lives forever and involve the Office of Scientific Investigation and Research. File number 87105, case manager Connor Doyle, day one. We're launching an investigation into the mysterious appearance of one Angela Corbet. She claims to have been in her home in Eureka, California one second and then in Toronto, Ontario the next. 
thanks for coming so soon. Where is she now? Well, the police are keeping her here, pending charges of trespassing. And for the safety of her daughter. Who discovered me? Well, two students, uh, Howard Samick and James McNaughton. Check out their story. Right. I just wish someone would make a decision about what we're supposed to do with her. We'll do all we can to help. I want you to handle the preliminary interview, but take it slow. Right. Excuse me. Well, this must be Angela and Sabine. You're another shrink. Ah, uh, I am. I'm Dr. Anton Hendricks. I'm here to help. I already told the cops everything. And they don't believe you. All I want to do is take my daughter and go home. Why don't you tell me what happened? Look, I was at home with Sabine one minute, and the next I'm here in another city under arrest, and they're charging me with trespassing. Is that what you were doing? I was making supper at home, and then a doorway, and... We had to charge her with trespassing. I mean, we asked her to move along peacefully. She was extremely resistant, couldn't calm her down. She finally said her name was Angela Corbet from Eureka, California. She couldn't explain how she got to Toronto, how she got into the men's residence, she doesn't know. So we just took her to University Hospital, had her checked out by a psychiatrist. She presented signs of shock from psychological trauma, paranoia bordering on hysteria at first. From my brief session with her, my opinion is she's not unstable. Whatever happened to her was very disturbing for her, even terrifying. Later, I checked with the California Department of Motor Vehicles. A woman by the name of Angela Corbet does live in Eureka, California. You figure it out. Would you like to tell me the story about how you got here? OK. Good. So you were at home, and you were watching TV. Then what happened? The door opened. The front door? What door? The one to the sunlight. Did you go through this door? With Mummy? And now we were here. So I'm standing here, like, uh, getting a pop, and then I turn around and poof, right where you are. Here? Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, I thought that they came in through the door. But that couldn't have happened, Howie, because I would have seen them. And how much time elapsed between the time you went over there and the time that they appeared? Like six seconds, max. And the door was locked. Yeah, it's like that uh, Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Well, I don't know how much the uncertainty is really relevant here in the macroscopic world. There was a party that night. Were you there? No, we were studying. Look, I know everyone thinks we're lying, but I am telling you, there is no normal way she could have got in here. According to the desk monitor on duty, Howard and James were in their room studying from 5 p.m. onward. At around 10, 15 p.m., they showed up, and no one matching their description had entered the building. We need to rule out the possibility that this was a staged event. Could they have gotten here this fast by any other means? I've run Westmat, Central Scan, Interpol, and CIS, all airline bookings, bus, train, even car rental companies. Nobody has an Angela Corbet traveling on or around the date in question. She could have traveled under an alias. Possibly, although immigration has no record of anyone matching their description. Well, if she's perpetrating a hoax, how does she expect to benefit? It could be some ruse to attract public sympathy. Yeah. Let's see what Dr. Hendricks gets from his assessment. Yeah. Are you comfortable? I guess. Okay, we're going to begin. I'm going to ask you some questions. I know they're going to seem rather obvious, but I just want you to give me the most direct answers. Is your name Angela Corbet? Yes. Do you live at 342 Lightbourne Crescent in Eureka, California? Yes. Do you have any living relatives? Just Sabine and my sister Mary. Is Mary your twin? No, she's five years older. What do you do for a living, Angela? I'm a secretary in an accounting firm in Eureka. 
Are you married? Divorced. Why is that? Because I threw him out. He was no good for me or Sabine. What does any of this have to do with how I got here? We're trying to understand you better. Please, I, I know you're under a great deal of stress. Dr. Hendricks, I want to take my daughter home. All of the questioning in the world isn't going to make that happen. You and Sabine are free to go whenever you like. It's entirely up to you. Can you find out what happened to us? That's what we're trying to do, but I'm going to have to ask you to be patient. Right now, all we're doing is assessing your psychological profile. If you and Sabine are in good hands, I promise you that. My psychological profile. I'm tired, I'm confused, and I'm sick of being treated as though I'm a liar. I don't think you're a liar. Well, what do you think? I think that you and your daughter went through something extremely traumatic. Something that's very real to you. It was real. I'm not saying it wasn't. You both experienced an event, something. Something that defies conventional understanding, perhaps. Now, I can help you deal with that. But you're going to have to trust me. Can you do that? I'll try my best. She's not consciously lying to us. She seems utterly convinced of her story. Do you agree with the university psychiatrist's assessment? Some elevated stress levels, but otherwise she's cogent. Makes sense, if you believe her. That must be Donna reporting in from Eureka. Well, we've started the preliminary inspection of the Corbet house. And I've also talked to the neighbors and the subject's sister, Mary. Now that interview should be downloading as we speak. I don't know, I, I phoned Angela about 7 p.m. And we only talked for about 10 minutes. She was making Sabine some dinner. I was supposed to babysit. And I was gonna be a bit late because she had to go and take her class. So I phoned her a half hour later. There was no answer. So I just, I don't know, I just went or went over. It was weird. It was food burning, the television was still on, but no sign of Angela or Sabine. I called school friends, I called the workplace, and then the police. Nothing. Then finally, at about 10 p.m., I get a call from the police in Toronto. It's just strange. I don't know what's going on. It's weird. Did you get that? Yeah. Thanks, Lindsay. Good work. I'll keep monitoring the site. Uh, the next transmission will be in 12 hours. So someone moves halfway across the continent in a blink of an eye. You want to tell me how that's possible? Try regressing her. See if she remembers a few more details. Angela, can you hear me? Yes. I want you to go back in time to May 5th, two days ago. It's 7 p.m. Where are you? At home. In the kitchen. My sister just phoned me to say hello. What are you doing? Making imperial Chinese chicken. Sabine's favorite. I have to hurry to get to my class. Where's Sabine? Watching TV. In the living room. Dinner's almost ready. The breeze. The small gust of wind. Where's the wind coming from? The living room. So bright. Sabine. No, Sabine, don't! Sabine, don't! Sabine, no! What about the trespassing charges on Angela? Headquarters had them dropped to assist our investigation. <laughs> That's convenient. I think the university wants this one off their books. 
What are your results from the environmental scan of the dormitory? We found nothing. Your conclusions from the hypnosis? I believe Angela Corbet experienced something quite traumatic. And no matter what the outcome of this investigation, this woman is going to need counseling. I don't think she understands what has happened to her any more than we do. So we're still at square one. Let's move the entire investigation to the source. Take a closer look at where this phenomenon may have initially taken place. Case file update, day six. So far, initial environmental scans of the Corbet house have turned up normal baseline readings. We're preparing Angela and her daughter for real-time biomonitoring scans in conjunction with uninterrupted surveillance of the house. Geothermal and geomagnetic environmental scans, all negative. Nothing. Nothing. It just doesn't make sense. Do you know, if what she said actually happened, there'd be some residue, some traces of electromagnetic radiation, something. I know. I've got something here for you, Sabine. Now, they're a little bit uh -uh. sticky. No, won't hurt, won't hurt. They're one. Stay still, honey. Let the man do his job. Two. Here. How long will this last? Until we can determine the nature of the events you described. Well, what exactly are you looking for? Oh, anything out of the ordinary in the environment or in your own bodies. You mean we could have caused this to happen? We can't rule that out. If it happens again, your vital signs will be recorded. They can offer us a clue as to the kinds of things that might be at work here. Yeah, but don't worry. If anything should happen, we'll be inside as soon as possible to help you and Sabine. Case log update. The team has spent the requisite period of 168 hours logging biofeedback from Angela and her daughter, as well as keeping the house under continuous surveillance. We'll continue on-site monitoring for a second week. Possibly, it actually exists that it does. It's there, and we can All right, it. it's been nearly two weeks. What do we have? Uh, nothing quite yet. There's no government weapons testing in the area. There's no stray energy fields. What about the environmental experiments? Uh, we tried practically everything. Electrostatic fields, uh, altering the atmospheric conditions to various extremes, hot, cold, differing the humidity levels. Still no evidence? Uh, afraid not. All right. If any of you have any theories, now's the time to put them on the table. Anyone? Peter may have one. Oh, thanks a lot. Um, it's, uh... It's kind of out there. Let's hear it. I think we may be dealing with some form of apportation. Instantaneous movement through physical space. One moment you're in California and then boom, you're in Canada. The question is how? I have a couple of hypotheses. The first of which being psychokinetic apportation. Angela and or Sabine may be subconsciously accessing psychokinetic energy that is strong enough to transport them across the continent. But, Peter, neither of them have exhibited any PK ability. You're right. So we go to the second hypothesis. If the energy responsible wasn't internal, then it had to be external, i.e., some concentrated flux in the space-time continuum. You're talking about the fabric of space being bent. That's right. A conduit forming between two distant points. A wormhole. Now, can I prove it? I'll give it a little more time. Peter, as of today, you don't have anything. These are hypotheses. Hypotheses need testing. I recommend we scale back the investigation, pull out, and maintain periodic contact with the subjects. Why? Well, you said it yourself. There's no hard evidence, only testimony. A witness's testimony is evidence. I know. Let's close up shop. Tomorrow, first thing. What are you going to tell Angela? So that's it? We have no choice, Angela. We found nothing. You still think I'm lying, don't you? No. No, we don't. What if it happens again? This could have been a one-time occurrence. And if you're wrong? Angela, look. We've tried everything, believe me. Yeah. You're right. I guess it still just scares me. If there's an emergency, you know how to reach us. We'll keep regular contact with you over the next six months.
File number 87105, Log Supplement, Case Manager Connor Doyle. We've maintained periodic contact with Angela over the past two months. We became concerned when she didn't check in over a two-week period, and repeated attempts to contact her failed. Investigator Donner was dispatched to personally re-establish contact. That's it. That's all I know. The neighbors all say the same thing. Two weeks ago, they woke up to find the house gone. No one saw or heard a thing. And no contact with Angela or her daughter. Which means they either saw nothing or they're too afraid to talk. Well, they're certainly anxious and defensive. Whether from fear of the unknown or some outside intimidation is difficult to determine. What about her sister? I sent a team over to her apartment. It's empty. No sign of her at all. Well, there's definitely been some heavy machinery here, but uh, neither the Department of Works or the State Development Commission has issued any permits for demolition on the site. What exactly did you find? Uh, industrial grade tire trucks, probably Caterpillar, a couple of flatbeds, about two weeks old. And no one's talking about it? Professor Doyle, mm -hmm. Operations is calling you on a secure line. I don't know, what do you think they want? Nothing would surprise me. Doyle here. Professor Doyle, I'm responding to your request for additional research and personnel. Unfortunately, we can proceed no further. I see. Headquarters wants us to terminate the investigation. What? Why? No explanation given. Oh. case log entry. We've been unable to determine what happened to Angela, Mary, and Sabine Corbet. The traces left at the site of the home remain unexamined as per your express instructions. This investigation has been terminated. Connor Doyle, out. Did you go through this door? With mommy? And now we are here. The OSIR never saw these subjects again. The cause of what occurred to Angela Corbet and her daughter could not be determined conclusively. Their journey from California to Toronto without any known material conveyance and the subsequent permanent disappearance of Angela, her sister and Sabine is only one small yet tragic example of the mysteries in this infinite universe we share. I'm Dan Aykroyd for Sci Factor.
these stories are inspired by the actual case files of the Office of Scientific Investigation and Research. Larissa, there's one gift you didn't open yet. C'est bien. Thank you so much. <laughs> you must thank your uncle, too. Anytime, ma chérie. It's been the best day. <laughs> oh. Okay, so I had an idea what you were getting. Let's go break it in. Should we help clean up? Mais non, go and enjoy yourselves. <laughs> Oh, a grandi. Mm -hmm. You said first. Marissa, go easy on you. <coughs> C'est Marissa! Ancient myths and man's imagination have conjured up a lexicon of monsters. The Greek Minotaur, the dragons of Avalon, ocean leviathons, werewolves. We tell our children they are only made up stories. Nothing so hideous in our world. Did you see the buddies? No. You're lucky. I've never seen anything like it before. Only a sick man would hide down here. No man has did what I saw. What the hell was that? We're going to need backup. Call it in. Base, this is Unit 3. We're approaching Junction 4B. Something's definitely down here. Unable to confirm at this time. Requesting backup. File number 28120, case manager Connor Doyle, initial case log. We're investigating the mysterious deaths of four individuals. One survivor of the attacks, one officer Jacques Gauthier, remains in a coma. Preliminary interview is underway. 
I hope you haven't just had lunch. The bite marks are rather large, but similar in pattern and depth to, to a predatory reptile. I'm no animal expert, but I'd say whatever did this was attempting to feed on the first two victims. What about the others? Well, it looks to me like they just, uh, what's the word? Annoyed it? I was um, the third man on the reconnaissance. Jacques stationed me near the mouth of the sewer. I heard um, that roar. I don't know what else to call it. And um, screaming and thrashing in the water. What makes you think it wasn't a man? No, no, madam. Nothing human can make such a sound. At first, I couldn't believe it was them. Not like that. It couldn't be. And then I saw pieces of Marisa's dress soaked in blood. And I saw Armand's face when he came back out of the sewer. And I knew it. My husband, my family were all dead. One of the officers' walkie-talkies was on Como during the attack. Now, I've isolated the unidentified sound made from the recording from the local police dispatch. It most closely resembles the warning sound of the bear. So we compiled the attack sounds of all of the Ursus arcto species native to this part of the world, hoping for some kind of a match, but... European brown bears have been extinct in this region since the turn of the century. Exactly. So we widened the net, and this is what we came up with. What is it? A North American grizzly. Our objective is to identify and confirm the origin of the phenomenon, rectify the situation so that public safety and your national security aren't compromised. I understand. I've been instructed by my superiors to assist you in any way I can. I've seen pictures of the victims, but we would like to conduct our own examination of the bodies. Certainly. The time is of the essence, madame. I'll see to it personally. Thank you. This is Ray Donahue. Commander, your help is appreciated. But it's imperative your involvement not contaminate the investigation. My instincts toward the course of action in this case do not include poking about with probes. We should go after this thing with everything we've got. Your concern is duly noted. Are you a parent, Professor? I'm a mother of three children. Two of them are the same ages as those murdered girls. I understand your position in this matter, Commandant. However, this is not a search and destroy mission, it's a scientific investigation. Lives are at stake, Monsieur. Professor Doyle? Excuse me. Commander. Listen, Connor. These impressions are totally inconsistent with paw prints from the bear family. You see this four toed spread, scale markings? It looks more like a, a reptile. So we're dealing with more than one creature? Well, it, it, it seems that way, except these prints indicate only one animal leaving and re-entering the sewer. I don't know what this makes sense. Cooper, the deaths are consistent with a nut with a knife. Yeah, 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 and I, I know, but when you factor in all the environmental assessments, as well as the depth and accuracy of all these impressions, I don't know, I just don't think it's very likely. Impossible? Let's just say, if it was a guy wearing lizard feet, he had to have weighed at least 600 kilos. All right, let's stay together. Some kind of organic waste byproduct. Can you see me? The gain's up all the way. It's dark, but operational. Acknowledge Alpha Team. Proceed with caution. A 
Affirmative. Any idea what it might be, Cooper? Do you have any readings? Negative. Checking other feeds. Bear! Donna here, there's something moving through Tunnel 7. The surveillance system is down, Tunnel 7. Visual and audio communications are knocked out. Alpha team, do you copy? We copy. Permission to proceed to Tunnel 7 and attempt first-hand visuals. Negative. Alpha team, retreat to sewer entrance. We need more security before we go after it. Affirmative. We're on our way. Assess your clearer men. Let's run that audio again, see if it's another match. log update. The death of two officers of Commandant Saint-Cyr's squad has resulted in her increasing desire to terminate this phenomenon. I'm requesting additional security and more scientific and technical support from headquarters. Ray, the autopsies have been scheduled for 1,300 hours. I'll arrange for transport. What do you think? Well, I really can't conclude anything, except judging from the size of that limb, we're dealing with a creature that's got to be at least seven feet tall. But there are so many inconsistencies. Good news. The police officer who was attacked has come out of his coma. Lindsay, get over to the hospital, see what he remembers. Cooper, I need you to look at the victim's bodies, see if you can find anything conclusive. I want to know exactly what we're up against. I must concur with our autopsy report. The lacerations do appear to have been inflicted by a large bear-like claw. Individual wounds are narrow, approximately four millimeters in width, ranging in depth from superficial to four centimeters. Large areas of flesh in the upper torso have been torn away. The bite pattern is indicative of a large flat rounded snout with multi-layered, sharp, irregular teeth. This pattern is consistent with the feeding behavior of alligators. Fiber and follicle found in the left shoulder wound of victim number one appears to be a coarse hair, not belonging to the victim. Hey, Connor, come and have a look at this. The one on the left is a hair follicle from a grizzly bear. The one on the right? A fiber that I extracted from one of the victim's wounds. I think we got a match, but I'm gonna send it to headquarters for DNA analysis. It looks like the first two victims were attacked by a grizzly bear, left for dead, and then scavenged by an American alligator. I beg your pardon, but I thought everything indicated only one creature. I know, I know, but now I'm not so sure. At the same time, it's impossible for two unlike species to mate and form a viable offspring. And what do we make of this? Where did this come from? The policeman, Jacques Gautier, our only eyewitness. What do you think? Mutations this elaborate rarely survive birth. I've isolated the radioactive material from the sewer. It's an isotonic tracer used in medical and biological research. For example, this isotope could be used to highlight a particular organ on an X-ray or to track the growth of a tumor. Could it be hospital waste? Yeah, it could be. But just upstream from this part of the sewer is a charming multinational corporation called Biodefin. High-tech genetic research. Oh, yeah, cutting-edge stuff. Check them out. Again, I assure you, we are scrupulous in our containment procedures, and we pride ourselves on our concern for the environment. But I appreciate your need to get to the bottom of this matter. When can we speak to Monsieur Junot? Oh, he'll be back next week. I'm sure he'll be able to answer any other questions you and your organization may have. Bonjour. So what do you think? I suppose he could be on the up and up. It's just that... Too many coincidences. It'll be interesting to see just how long it does take Monsieur Junot to get back to us. Impressive equipment, Professor. We're hoping to pinpoint the exact location of the creature. We've decided on a search and capture strategy. 
Capture it? You must be joking. Uh, not in the least. The OSIR is in charge of this investigation, and until I say differently, we will attempt to capture the creature, or at least identify it. I'll see that the proper security is in place. But tell me, Professor, how many more have to die in the name of your scientific investigation? <laughs> I must warn you, my patience is wearing thin. Ray. We can arm the men with high-caliber tranquilizing guns, radio-controlled darts. If we can't bring it down, we can at least tag it. Get the team together. We'll go in tonight. Donard, you copy? 10-4. Visual feeds coming through with minimal interference. Have we reached the edge of our initial perimeter? Uh, affirmative. You're approximately 200 meters from the junction. Move in. Stay sharp, everyone. I don't like this. They're moving out of our range. I've got something. Hey, guys, I think you ought to see this. Is it here? Motion sensor reads negative. Then let's bring it to us. We got something in tunnel 6A. It's moving fast. Where is it? Heading this way. 100 meters in closing. Intercepted. Junction 4B. We have a lot of activity down there. Could be more than one animal. Doyle, recommend you evacuate immediately. Negative, Donner. Bravo team, meet at junction 4B. Sandra, move it. Tailed. Almost done. I guess that'll do. Team, repeat. Meet at junction 4B. And let's be ready for it. Moving too fast and erratic. Bravo. Unable to pinpoint location or description of what's down there. Use extreme caution. Repeat, use extreme caution. Get ready now. Sparse hair covering over thick, scaly epidermis. Body temperature indicates warm-blooded, possibly mammalian order. Sex appears to be female. Now proceeding with the internal examination. Overall, organ structure appears normal. Respiratory, pulmonary, and digestive systems. Internal reproductive organs, again, suggest female sex of the mammalian order.
Professor Doyle. What is this thing? I'm hoping we can determine that when all the data is in, Doctor. When, when do you and your team think you will be through? Hey, 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 Connor. Look, look, I have just got started on this. In due time, why do you ask? The mayor, the army, the department, they all want these to go away. And so do I. We'll work as fast as we can. My preliminary findings indicated that this was some kind of genetic experiment involving an alligator and a grizzly bear. And my results suggest that this genetic hybrid was created prior to being released into the contaminated sewer system, which points his finger squarely at Biel Defin. Everything does seem to point in that direction, but it shouldn't be possible. Well, personally, I'm interested in why they did it rather than how. Well, I don't know, but maybe this creature was mistakenly dumped with the toxic waste when everyone thought it was dead. Let's see if we can't persuade this bio to let us have a look at their facility. I'll contact HQ and apprise them of our plans. Final log update. We can only speculate on the true nature of the creature's origin. Several theories have been formulated. It could have been prehistoric, a revolutionary man-made genetic hybrid, or a natural flute mutation. A toxic cleanup of the sewer system has been ordered and headquarters is proceeding with an investigation into bio Defin and the whereabouts of its principles. End of transmission. Perhaps the OSIR's documentation of this event offers terrible vindication to those who believe in monsters. But even more monstrous is the absence of humanistic and moral guidance as man crosses over into the realm of outright biological creation. I mean, what else is being developed in these biolabs, and for what purpose? The cedar has seen better days. I'll have to replace it next year. Yeah. What, you got money stuffed in your mattress or something? Yeah. Listen to that college boy like you. You still remember how to drive a tractor? Huh? Oh, whoa, whoa, funny guy. How'd he turn it on, anyway? Oh, uh, you got me. Just, uh, just take it out to the, uh, you know, north quarter there. I'll meet you there. Right. Brad! I'm gonna cut it off. There's uh, something stuck here. That'd be great. Hey, Grandpa, let's see some heat. Some heat? Uh, let's see. Look at Okay. Oh! Whoa! Oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. It's nice to see you with Joshua again, Matt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not quite the same, though, is it? Grandpa, watch out! Newton's first law of motion. An object remains at rest unless acted upon by an external force. But what if an object moves without any visible evidence of force acting upon it? This was the disturbing complication which further upset the life of Matt Peck after he suffered the tremendous physical loss of his right arm. A complication that drove him and his family to reconsider the laws of motion as we generally understand them with the help of the Office of Scientific Investigation and Research. Now, this guy can hit. You watch him. See, see that rhythm he's got? What do you know about rhythm? <laughs> Josh, why don't you go up to bed right now, OK? Oh, Dad. 
No, I gotta talk to Grandpa for a second. I'll be up in a sec, tuck you in. Night. Brush your teeth. <clears throat> what is it, son? Um, you know, Josh and I have to get back in town in a couple days. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna miss that kid. Yeah. He loves you a lot, you know. Listen, I was uh, talking to Earl Johnson down at the hospital today, and, you know, he says those new prosthetic arms are just like the real thing. Maybe you should go down... They got fingernails? They got hair in the arms? They got blood in the veins? Of course they don't. They're made of plastic and a lightweight steel alloy, which will allow you to Well, get... then they're not just like the real thing, are they? Here we are, boys. Although why two grown men can't do things for themselves? Look... Dad, the doctors say that if you just go down... Look, all I want to do is watch the ball game in peace, okay? Damn it. Get me down. I mean, I just... I'm useless. It's bloody... Manager's log, file number 52113. Initial contact made by Dr. Paul Slater, professor of biophysics, Penn State University. Dr. Slater was apprised of this claimed anomalous activity by one of the subjects and a former student, Brad Peck. I just finished uh, prepping the witnesses. I should be able to complete the preliminary interviews by this evening. Hmm. We'll need physiological and psychological assessments to follow. I'll get started on that as soon as the prelims are done. On-site inspection and circumstantial assessments underway. When Dr. Hendricks has completed his report, proceed with environmental scans. I'll start a preliminary layout. Brad Peck asked me to come over and take a look. Said uh, he'd never seen anything like it before. And he was right. I found structural damage to the house and uh, the property. And I saw some uh, objects freezing in midair. It was... Uh, it was, well, I don't know what it was. But it violates every principle of physics I'm aware of. Dad was a classic football hero in college. Then he played top tier baseball and services. He was good with his hands, you know, he's natural. So it was, uh, it was a bit rough for him when, you know, the accident. And I thought I might come around, deal with the loss of his arm, but, uh, you know, all this. Stuff flying out of nowhere and... This is gonna sound... odd. I was walking with Matt, and I stumbled for a moment, and I felt a hand grab my elbow to steady me. It's almost... gentle. There was nothing there. I, it couldn't have been mad. I was on his right side. It was the strangest sensation. It was almost comforting. Case file update. Axon and Gerard are beginning an environmental analysis of the Peck farm. As well, assessments of witnesses underway. How did you feel when you first woke up in the hospital? What do you think? I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to wake up. Do you feel any differently now that you've had time to live with it? No, no, not really. You're not very comfortable discussing this, are you? I suppose not. Does that make me a difficult patient? I've seen worse. When exactly did this injury occur? About six weeks ago. Healed up pretty well. Remarkably, I'd say. So what's all this stuff for? Uh, it serves different purposes, really. Mm -hmm. What about that one? Is that some sort of uh, scanner or something? Uh, this thing's called a magnetometer, and this, uh, this measures fluctuations in those parts of the uh, magnetic spectrum that often coincide with unusual phenomena. Right on. Yeah, science geeks like us use it a lot. It's a normal day. It's pretty sunny like today, actually. 
You know, Dad and I have worked this land together since I was a kid. You know, I shut everything down. I know I did. It started up on its own. I'm picking up inconsistent readings. Nothing on my scan. It was an accident. Okay, right here. Look at this. Is that high? It's off the scale. Where's the source? Look out! Case file update. Background historical and archival assessments now underway. Nothing we have found so far suggests we are dealing with a hoax. Soil and water samples, glass and plaster fragments will be enclosed in data pouches labeled DD52113 en route for analysis. How much pain is he in? Variable, tingling, some sharp stabbing pain. Is it real? I mean, is it physical? Hard to say. As is the case with so many amputees, I can't tell whether Matt's disordered nervous system is causing the pain or the pain is being caused by Matt's disordered nervous system. But what intrigues me is Matt's neural reorganization is informed by his emotional state. How do you mean? Well, this injury has had a deep effect on his personal esteem. He's still in denial. He still won't face the implications of losing his right arm. What about the actual amputation? Anything specific about the site itself? Well, the skin graft is healed incredibly fast. How fast? Three or four weeks ahead of schedule, considering the size of the injury. Interesting. Keep tracking his recovery. Peter. Yeah. What do you got? Ugh. Thanks, Curtis. Uh, there's no evidence of any toxic or hazardous substances capable of inducing hallucinations or any kind of perceptual abnormalities. We did, however, find a geophysical anomaly. Well, that might explain the uh, runaway vehicle. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, we found a deposit of magnetite that created a strong enough field to momentarily throw the magnetometer out of whack. We ran some more tests and we found that the deposit was actually concentrated enough along with worn linkage to to pull the truck and i think that that's what caused the uh, cedar to start spinning even though the motor was off so the magnetite may have caused matt's accident yeah it looks that way could this uh, deposit have caused the other occurrences as well no the field it generates is too localized uh it would only affect things in close proximity all right let's conduct further tests what about the events at the house well, the data is far from conclusive, but uh, it all points in one direction. And that is? Matt Peck. Yeah, well, how long is it going to take? You've been here nearly a week. Matt, they are trying to help. If they want to help me, they should help with the farm work. Oh, please, give them a chance. Look, this is not a research center for the crippled. You are not a cripple, Matt. I just want to be done with things moving around by themselves. Mr. Peck. If you just give us a little more time to... I want to tell you something! Oh, son of a... At 2200 hours of day six of this investigation, something extraordinary happened. It was witnessed both by Matt and Sarah Peck, and uh, Curtis here saw it as well. Now, we captured this event in a variety of monitoring equipment, but we got the best results from thermal imaging. Check this out. Let's see that last part again. I'll slow it down. Oh, it's remarkable. And look at his biostat readings during the incident. These readings coincide with the moment of the phantom appendage phenomenon. Well, we've covered all other plausible explanations for this phenomenon. Any other theories? It could be a subatomic energy matrix generated by Matt Peck. This suggests that Matt is solely responsible for the phenomena. You're right. 
but someone else in the house could be using latent PK ability to produce the appendage. No, no, Matt's psych profile suggests that if he were the one that was causing this, he would be the one to tell us first. Honesty is a high priority with him. So, last night Matt saw the glass falling and without thinking, just threw it. He's still at a very strong stage of denial. He hasn't completely accepted the loss of his arm. So, it's conceivable that the traumatic loss caused Matt to access innate but unconscious psychokinetic powers, and they manifest themselves in a situation where he reacts involuntarily. Let's show them the tape. See how they react. You turn that damn thing off. Dad, weren't you watching? You did this. Now, they did that. These days, people can put anything they want on tape. Mr. Peck, I assure you, we haven't tampered with the tapes. Look, I would know if I was making things move. Dad. I know I didn't do that. You're all out of your minds. Dad, why don't you just give them five minutes, all right? Just listen to them for five minutes. We need to run more tests. To help you and us better understand this phenomenon and hopefully assist you to use it with more control. Matt, please. That freak show is not me. log update. We have been given an extraordinary opportunity to observe and research an unusual form of PK activity. But the meeting with Matt Peck this evening was very disappointing. I'm concerned we may lose this opportunity to study this phenomenon. If Matt will cooperate, I'd like to uh, run some more tests. Such as? Well, I'd like to see how much of his ability is reflexive and voluntary action and how much can be controlled, how much can be linked to his perceptual experience. At the moment, it seems pretty haphazard. Well, we have to remember that he's been through a very traumatic experience. I would suggest counseling him. What do you have in mind? Well, if he's willing, I would like to start a program of hypnotherapy, pre-conscious suggestion. Mm. He could be eased into his own method of controlling his phantom limb. Copy. I'll be right out. Mr. Rollins, if Matt knew I was talking to you, he'd throw one hell of a fit. I understand. He's a very proud man. Are you sure Matt is responsible for all these strange occurrences? Pretty sure. We need to run some more tests. And you can teach him how to use this power? I can't guarantee that, but we'll try. We have operatives who specialize in these kinds of cases. But first, Matt has to stop denying that his life is different now. He's not ready for that. He may never be ready. If we could get him to accept his newfound ability, it could become as good as a real arm. I'll talk to him. Rather live the rest of your life bitter and disappointed? They have proof, Matt. Look. You are not a freak. You are my husband. And somehow, God gave you this gift. Let these people teach you how to use it. I, I don't want any gift. I just. I just want things to be the way they used to be. Oh, but they can't be, Matt. And you are no less of a man because of it. I didn't do all those things. And no matter what you say or what they say, I'm not going to change my mind. No, I mean, I'm, all those scientists have proved is absolutely nothing. <laughs> you know, they, they've fed this family a lot of 
lies, a lot of false hope, you know, and I, I, I want them to leave. Oh, Matt, don't. No, I'm serious. No, the first thing tomorrow. Um, I, I'm serious. It's beyond me. It's beyond me, but it's getting to me, I'll tell you that. It really is. Grandson. You know, how do you think he feels? I mean, he's terrified. You know, the wife's terrified. I'm not working properly. I'm not sleeping properly. He's not himself. Jumpy, irritable. Not himself. And sometimes, sometimes he really loses it, you know. He's violent outbursts. It's not the man I married at all. I can't work the farm properly. I'm a half a man here, basically. All right? Anyways, I've had enough of this. Turn this thing off. Can you turn this off? What is this, anyways? It's just more aggravation for me. Okay, Matt, if that's what you want. Curtis, maybe Matt and I could talk for a while, discuss the options. No, there are no options. You and your team have been here for a week, and you've turned this place into a funhouse. We'll be gone by noon. Good. Isn't there anything you can do? I'm sorry, Mrs. Peck. Matt! Hey, Grandpa, look at me. Joshua, you come down from there right now. Oh, come on. Joshua, I mean it. Be careful. <laughs> Joshua! Oh, Lord. Grandpa, help! Hurry. Help! This is Rollins, 1078. Copy that. I'm on my way. I'm almost there. Just... Hold on. Help. Hold on, Josh. <coughs> Josh. Josh. Grab a help. Listen to me. Listen. Relax. Listen. Try and take my hand, okay? Just relax and try and take my hand. Just reach. Help. Josh. Josh. It's okay. It's okay, I've got you. Oh, my God. Final case log entry. Since the final incident in the barn, Matt Peck has become an enthusiastic participant in the OSIR's program to study his psychokinetic powers. Closing case file number 52113. Curtis Rollins, out. After 19 months of training with the OSIR, Matt Peck refined the involuntary energy of his phantom limb and learned to control it. Now, has what we've just seen violated Newton's first law? That an object remains at rest unless acted upon? Well, not really. You see, Matt Peck was able to concentrate this newfound psi kinetic force to take the place of his missing limb and act upon the objects in the world around him. I'm Dan Aykroyd for Psi Factor.